The farming community has been growing on the San Juan Islands, and it's gaining attention. A BC dairy company, Excalibur Dairy Farms, has purchased a large lot on the island. The owner of the company, Arthur Smith, plans to relocate to the islands and personally oversee the farm's operations. But his vision extends beyond traditional dairy farming. He aims to also create an immersive farm experience for tourists and visitors. This includes tours of the dairy operations and his personal flower garden, offering a unique attraction in the spring. But that's not all. Excalibur Dairy Farms has entered into a lease agreement with a local grocery chain, earmarking a portion of their lot for a new supermarket, which is very large compared to anything on the island. This development has stirred mixed reactions within the community. While some residents welcome the convenience of a larger grocery store, others express concern about its potential impact on the small town atmosphere of the island. Notably, the co-op farm has been vocal in its opposition, fearing the supermarket might overshadow local agricultural producers. Arthur attempts to calm their concerns and announces that the supermarket is willing to support local producers and sell their goods. But ultimately, the Island Trust Council voted narrowly in favor of the supermarket at four to three. As these new ventures take shape, the Farm Valley continues to flourish, with more farms establishing themselves around the pioneering Digby family farm. Meanwhile, the retirement village is not just growing, but also enhancing its appeal with the construction of a hilltop park. And just down the hill, on the riverside, a private campground is opening soon. Hello, I'm Poplar Ponderosa, and welcome to part 5 of San Juan Islands, Canada. In this episode, we will start by building the Excalibur Dairy Farm and Supermarket. Next, we'll head into the Farm Valley and build and detail more farms around the Digby Family Farm. Then, we'll build the Riverside Campground and finish off by expanding the Retirement Village. Alright, let's get building. Okay, so we're starting today's episode at the dairy farm. Uh, first, I'm creating the industrial area here, and then I'll put in the main building. You can see I have a loose grid network that is attached to the gravel road that goes out to our gravel pit. Here, I'm placing down a few of the main buildings for our dairy farm. Uh, disregard the name for the uh, industrial area there. I just haven't applied the actual name to it. I'll, I'll do that later. Now we're going to get down this supermarket prop. This is actually a real Canadian superstore. Um, I trimmed back the trees here because I thought they would want some visibility from the road as this gravel road is now being upgraded to asphalt and in the future will probably be a bigger road, maybe even four lane at some point, but uh, the area needs to grow out first. Note that I will be changing that parking lot for the grocery store later. I don't really like how it's laid out. It, it doesn't even make sense. People can't actually access most of those spaces. Um, so I'll, I'll come in later and I'll create a custom lot and connect it back to that other road for a little more circulation. So here I'm building out Arthur Smith's flower garden, uh, just using these nice little flower tiles, which um, add a little bit of color to the build. I really like that. So this will have a small parking lot and uh, a few props around it just to make it look like a more activated space where tourists can come in the spring or the summer and get a tour of the dairy farm and also walk around the flower garden. Later on, I'm also going to be adding some milking parlors and I'll even use the slaughterhouse asset, but uh, it, I'm kind of using it more for visual purpose, not as an actual slaughterhouse since this is dairy farm. Um, and then I'll be putting out some uh, farm fields with cattle. So please enjoy the time lapse and I'll see you in a little bit.
Okay, so we're back here by the Digby family farm. Uh, we're going to be expanding the area, building out some more farms, detailing, and just making this area look a little more activated and uh, working on the, the infill of the little farm fields. 
Here I actually have some sort of visual glitch on the screen. You could see it in the last episode as well. You see that ditch network uh, just floating in the middle there. I was ignoring it because I couldn't figure out how to get rid of it. Eventually I do, but uh, I hope you don't mind. It's just sitting there for now. So I know we've been spending a lot of time in this area detailing and building more farms. Uh, we've got lots more work to do in this area, so we're going to revisit it a couple more times before we're done with it. And um, I hope you're enjoying it. I really enjoy the process. Uh, farm detailing isn't something that I ever expected I would enjoy in this game. Uh, I came to it for the cities and the road building, but uh, as I got more into it, I enjoyed it more and more. So I hope you enjoy the time lapse of the farm detailing, and I'll see you in the next section where we build out the Riverside Campground.
Okay, so we're over here near the retirement village, and there's a river. And next to the river, I thought it would be nice to have a little campground. This is going to be a private campground. It's fairly small and it's close to town. I may eventually also build a larger provincial park, um, but this space isn't big enough for that, so I think private's a good, good way to go here. Here I'm using this wonderful rock assets to detail the side of the river. Uh, I thought it was really nice. And the campground asset is just the vanilla asset from the Park Life DLC. So enjoy the time lapse for the campground build. Okay, we're back over to our retirement village, which still doesn't have a name, actually. Uh, I've considered calling it Three Bridges for those three small bridges that go through the town. I realize there is actually a fourth bridge, but I thought it would be kind of funny if it was called Three Bridges, even though there are four. Some towns just have quirky things like that. Here I'm adding some more low density residential. I'm using the mid-century modern pack and a few other things from the steam workshop. I thought that some of these houses by the coast might be a little more fancy. So I really like the look of the mid-century modern for that purpose. Now here's something I wasn't so sure about while I was doing it. So here I'm adding like a little beachside motel. It does seem like it's in the park. I really do like the look of it and I think it fits in really well.
So up here on the hilltop, I'm actually expanding out our city services a little bit, putting in a fire hall and a police station. Uh, there'll also be a little crossing to a dog park, just so people have a little more to do up here. Okay, moving away from the hilltop, this area looked like it needed a little bit of work and I added a clinic. I also thought the corner would be a good location for a gas station, so I put that down with a little bit of parking. And I think I'll look for an infill opportunity here later on, probably just more houses, maybe a couple stores. Okay, that's going to be all for this episode. The farm valley is really starting to take shape, but there's still lots more work to do. I really like how this rock wall turned out. There may be too much parking here, but I'm okay with it. I also have some more work to do around the retirement village since we still have an empty road network across the river. Again, if you have any name suggestions for streets, towns, or industrial areas, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching and enjoy the cinematic. I think this might be one of my best in the series so far. Take care everyone.